was sitting in an interrogation room. Yeah, I was interrogated. Imagine you're the one who has been victimized and you're interrogated and not believed. That happened. That was the last time I spoke to police. Like imagine doing all of the things they tell you to do and then they never call you back. And then you have such bad PTSD from the interrogation that you went through with the cops that you're too scared to actually call the detective to even ask them what's happening. That's what happened. I got so scared and I was so traumatized by what happened in that room with that detective that I never called back because I was petrified of being like accused of lying again. I said I was scared and traumatized. Why would I continue to follow up on something when I'm diagnosed with severe PTSD and can barely function? And when I went for help, they told me I was a liar. Victims shouldn't be interrogated. Why was I interrogated? Why was I placed in a room and berated and told, I don't think you're telling the truth. And then when I finally break down and cry and I tell him, I'm not lying. You're not getting this right. This isn't true. And he finally goes, okay, you're right. But it's going to take a long time and I'll contact you and I'll let you know. But just know it's not going to happen soon. Would you want to contact a detective that dismissed you and made you feel like what you went through was your fault? Most arrogant officer I've ever met in my entire life. His name was Mike. And I don't remember his last name. I think it was like, I don't even remember. Mike was his first name. And he was a detective with the police department. And he was really cocky. And he talked to me about how he solved all kinds of cases that were like um, red rum. Like I just, he, I remember him telling me like, I just solved this recent red rum and I'm a really good detective. I mean, that's literally like how he treated me. Like I should be applauding him for solving it, you know? I would say detec Detective Mike was like your classic ma misogynistic asshole of a cop. Not the kind of cop you want to do to do your work at all and he traumatized me so much that like this is the most traumatic part of my story because i actually remember this i don't remember what happened to me um so i get into he brings me down he wants me to come down to the office or to the to the station and he puts me into this room which was weird he brought he put me into a a gray room um with a camera in the corner and like a table and it was like an interrogation room it was not a room for someone that's reporting something um he brought me there to interrogate me not to actually believe me. And that's how it started. And he told me that you're reporting him to the police because he didn't leave a phone number. And he also said that you were mad at him because he told you he had a girlfriend. And I was like, what? He never once told me he had a girlfriend. Okay. And he was like, well, he's from a really good family. And his family would never be involved in something like that. And he's like, well, you have no memory, so you must be lying. And I said, I'm what? And it went like this for three hours. And I was crying and he just kept trying to tell me that I had made the story up that it had not happened, that Nick had a story, I did not have a story, and because Nick had a story, and I was a jealous, angry girlfriend that didn't get a phone number, and he left, and I was jilted, my revenge was to call the cops on him. And I'm like, I have had plenty of guys turn me down, and I've never once reported them. Ever. I got so frustrated and agitated and I was like hyperventilating crying and then it was well you waited 
two days to call us. Why did it take you so long? You waited that time because you needed to come up with a plan. I finally got him to stop berating me and accusing me of lying. And he said to me, well, we'll see. We'll figure it out, but it's going to take time. We'll call you. And I said, okay. And he never called me. And I was so scared of him. And so I like suffered PTSD from what that happened in that room. I was actually diagnosed with it by a psychologist for twofold the PTSD from the actual incident and the PTSD from that interrogation. I felt like the, the cop gaslit me. That's what it felt like. I felt like he was gaslighting. And it was funny because I was trying to find him on the website and I don't remember his last name. His name is Mike. <laughs> and I don't know what his last name is. The only person I could find um, that's in uh, is a is a uh, lieutenant in investigations. His name is Mike, but I don't remember his last name being. Oh my God, you guys are contacting them. Oh my God. Oh dear. I tagged them on Twitter. I don't know. I honestly just I just tagged them on Twitter and I said it's been 4,885 days since you said you were going to call me and you haven't called me yet. <laughs> 4,885 days since you said you were going to call me. I think the detective is still there, but I tagged them on Twitter, so we'll see if they respond. <laughs> I said, I have a really large platform and everyone's going to know what you guys did. Sorry. <laughs>